Early this year in January, my niece called me and said the baby wasn't breathing. So I'm at the mall, which is about 15 minutes from her house. By the time I get to her house, the baby is still there. There's no way I beat the cops and ambulance to the house if the baby is not breathing. They should have took the baby to the hospital immediately. I wouldn't call my family first if I knew my baby wasn't breathing. I would call the ambulance or the hospital because at the end of the day, your family can't bring the baby back. When I got to the house, me personally, if they taking pictures, it's a crime scene. From the look of it, you are guilty because you didn't do what you were supposed to as a mother. Kishel ex boyfriend was supposed to be at the house, but at the end of the day, even if he was at the house, I still wouldn't want nobody like that around me if I don't know you. She was only with him for a month, so you don't know him. So when the cops basically uh, called her to the detective office to question her and ask her, you know, what happened or whatever, and tell her, you know, what the baby suffered from and all that, I don't think you should have called him to give him notification what they told you. You should have let them went and got him, but you gave him clarification to up and leave, so he up and left and been on the run ever since. They said the baby suffered from broken ribs, she was suffocated, and internal bleeding. The baby was only 13 months. A 13-month-old having broken ribs, being smothered, and, you know, basically being tortured, no child deserved that. And I think deep down inside, you should have been careful about who you have around your kids, period. Not just did her baby die, but she got her other child taken away because the baby died in her care. But then when the baby actually got to the hospital and they interviewed both of the kids, the other child had handprint marks around her mouth as if you were shutting her up. So they felt like the other child was being abused as well. So they took the other child and put it in foster care until the investigation is done. To me, she seemed stressed, but it don't seem like you're really worried. I feel like she hiding it. Either hiding what happened or you trying to cover up for him, either or. I hope the lie detector proved that she's telling the truth because if not, then I can't even trust you. And then as you being my niece, that's gonna let me know what type of person you are. You'll choose a man over your kids. Cashel, that's your aunt on the tape. How do you feel about what she's saying? I feel like she's lying. What is she lying about? About me not knowing him for, I only knew him for a month. Then talking about I called them. I didn't call it Emily, but I called them first. I feel like all she, but, all but, that she but those significant things. I mean, we're not here about how long you actually knew the guy or who you called. I'm here to clear my name up because I'm tired of people This is about your 13-month-old daughter being physically attacked and being killed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long did you know the guy? For like three months. Three months. Three, four months. Okay. I mean, you know, it's so hard to hear a little girl being tortured that way and losing her life. Like, what was running through her mind? What was she thinking? What, how fearful was she when this was, and this is your daughter. Um, uh, tell me about the day your daughter passed away. I mean, the night before, my, both of my kids was fine, you know, they ate. Um, my other daughter got her hair done, you know, but when it was time for bedtime, I got them a juice cup, put them in bed, had, turned on cocoa melon, and, you know, I gave them that juice cup, they laid down. I had the door on, on the crack, but my ex-boyfriend that night, he was acting weird that whole night, because he had went through my phone and found out I was, I was talking to somebody else, so he was just acting weird that whole night. I mean, my kids was in bed, so, you know, I was, we was going back and forth for a little bit. You know, I had a little drink, you know, and then um, I went in my room, I was drinking, I shut my door, had my door shut playing music. 
And then um, after that, he texted me, you know, asked him to throw his black out the door. But he was acting weird. After, you know, I took it, gave him his black. After that, you know, I was in my room still drinking a little bit. And then um, I ended up getting in the shower. And then after that, I, he was on the couch. So I went out there like, you know, what's wrong? Why? What's wrong? Like, what's wrong with you? You been weird. You had been acting weird the whole night. And he was like, um, because um, this, that third, he finally said it. He went through my phone. I'm like, why did you go through my phone? Like, why did you go through my phone? You never got your feelings hurt, this, that, and the third. So then after that, um, you know, I left him alone. I went in the room. I went to sleep the next morning. I woke up. I overslept. I woke up around like two. Usually my kids come wake me up. They come wake me up in the morning. They didn't. So as soon as I jumped up, I looked at my phone like it's two o'clock. Like, That's the first thing the kids on the line. I jumped up. I ran in the room to my kids, and I seen my daughter just laying there with her eyes open. And then how did you find out your daughter had passed? Well, um... When um, I went to the hospital and I first walked up and they came out and it was like, you know, she's gone. I'm like, what do you mean she's gone? And after that, I just broke down, started screaming and hollering and I broke down. And when you found out, they told you that she was killed? Yes. What was your reaction to that? When, well, I went to the police station like three different times and they finally told me like when the, uh, the paperwork and stuff came in, they finally told me she was murdered. I'm like, what do you mean my daughter was murdered? And she was like, your daughter was actually murdered. How did you think she passed away? I said, and her sleep says or something because my daughter, my, my kids went to sleep perfectly fine. Now, your aunt says that the police, they were telling you that she was murdered and they interviewed you, right? Why did you then give your boyfriend or ex-boyfriend a heads up? I never gave him a heads up. So your aunt? She was lying. She's, yes. Well, she's not lying or maybe she's misinformed. I don't know what, your aunt's not really lying about anything, is she? May, she might be confused about some facts, but. I mean, she's concerned, one, about your daughter that's still living, right? Mm -hmm. she, I think she's, you know, uh, devastated that she lost her niece to this manner. Um, she's not lying to hurt you, is she? It seemed like she is. You said that I did this, I posted this, or this, that. You don't know what you're talking about. I never said you I don't want nothing else to do with you. After this, after I prove my point, I don't want nothing to do with you, because I, I didn't never, do nothing. Never I, never, kid. I never, I never prove it. I I'm never, tired of being I never, 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 Is there any level of you that believes that your niece had something to do. No, I don't think she had nothing to do with it. I'm not gonna sit and just be like, you know, we all find boys that we like. You get what I'm saying? But really deep down inside, you was already grieving that your mom passed. You feel what I'm saying? You didn't fully grieve right, so you went to look for a man. Right. You found the man, okay? We all find men. If he was abusing you, what makes you think that a possibility he wouldn't do nothing Well, I think kids? a lot of mistakes were made. One, um, <laughs> when, you, when you bring a guy into your house or you know, whatever the situation may be, when you bring a partner into your house that's violent, that should be a red flag to, you know, that person has to go. They can't be violent in my house with my children. All right, Michelle, you came here, took a lie detector test. Did you witness anyone physically abuse your three-year-old daughter? You answered no. Do you have direct knowledge as to who caused the injuries to your three-year-old daughter? You answered no. Did you ever hit or strike your three-year-old daughter causing a mark or bruise on her body? You answered no. Did you ever cause deliberate physical harm to your three-year-old daughter? You answered no. Did you witness anyone physically abuse your one-year-old daughter, causing the injuries that led to her death? You answered no. Do you have direct knowledge as to who caused the injuries to your one-year-old daughter? You answered no. Did you ever hit or strike your one-year-old daughter causing physical injury? You answered no. Did you ever physically abuse your daughter causing suffocation? You answered no. 
Did you cause the injuries that led to your one-year-old daughter's death? You answered, no. The results came back all the same, and they came back that Cashel told the truth. This helps you, Thank Cassell. you so much, Steve, and for helping me. I hope that you can rebuild your life. <laughs> it's it's not easy because you know you lost a daughter and you're trying to get the other one back. Um, I do hope that whoever did this to your daughter, he did it. And he he go did it. But my whole thing is he's walking around. And I hope he gets caught and he's brought to justice because okay. that's the only thing that's left to you know for your daughter is that the person that did that to her. Is brought to justice. Okay. Um, the things that we talked about on stage, moving forward, you still have your daughter. Hopefully, yes. you you get her back I as her mother. Her. I'm yeah, but nice. you cannot make the same mistakes that you made in the past. Okay. When you get in relationships, you gotta go slow. The first time they exhibit violent behavior, they gotta go. You can't drink when you're taking care of kids. But it, it, it wasn't the drinking. She it didn't, didn't but fully, it didn't, but she it didn't, didn't help. fully grieve but over you, her mom. But I'm saying, that night, if you're sleeping till 2 in the afternoon, over you're not, slept. yeah. So I'm just saying, move forward, make good decisions. Don't, you don't want another tragedy happening in your life. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. I called you, Steve, for help because I watch your show all the time. Somebody's gonna watch this and say, you know what, she was brave enough to do that, I can do that too.